Hello everyone, this is CG Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video. Today's a video, stop me if you've heard this before, but we are here to break down, react and discuss Rangers 2, the opposition 0. Ah, just stretching and warming up people because it was a beautiful Sunday and we're going to have a lot of fun the day and... Before we go any further, actually, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel if you're new around here, that'd be greatly appreciated. We're trying to reach 55k, so any help would be greatly appreciated. But aye, there's a wee bit of football to talk about, and for the third time in seven, eight, eight days, we've went ahead and won 2 now and controlled the game for the first kick to the last. Now, unlike the game last Saturday, this opposition that we faced in Livingston Football Club actually got a shot on target and offered a little bit of a fray. And that's always a dangerous thing to come, especially when you've given a lot on Saturday, you've given a lot on Thursday, then you come into this game, which was always the, the Achilles heel of the Rangers team over the last couple of seasons. It was this game right Frickin' here that used to pull our scants down and kick us in the crown jewels because we couldn't win it. We couldn't get the three points. We would drop points religiously in these types of games. But despite everything we've gave in the last two games this week, we managed to show the improvement and the, the progression of this Rangers team because we went ahead and made five changes to the squad and comfortably and controlly won 2-0 got the three points. But there is one thing I do want to say, and I've seen a couple of people, rightly so, hell, we've all got our own opinions, and that's what the nation is all about, me and the down there in the comment section below. But I've seen a lot of people saying, ah, the second half wasn't good enough, oh, Rangers took the fit off the gas, but again, I'm going to be brutally honest, I couldn't care less. Like, genuinely, I could not care less. As long as three points is coming home to us, I'm happy. Happy guy. Now, speaking of a happy, happy guy, I want to talk about the first goal in this game, and it came from your man, Joe Rebo, who was back into the starting 11. He was one of the five changes that was actually made. But before we go ahead and speak about our wee pal, Joe, I want to talk about your man, Hadji, because Aribo is now on the right-hand side. That allows Hadji to go into the centre, and... You look at the first 15, 16 minutes of this game and we were truly gone for it and at it. When we were running the show, who was the orchestrator? Who was the man in there making things happen? It was your boy, Hadji, and that's phenomenal because to me, he's got some really unfair critics and some people going after him and trying to turn him into a whipping boy, but he leads the league in assists playing out of position. He's had individual moments, but playing in his preferred position today... I honestly thought Hadji was absolutely incredible and the first goal perfectly summarises that because it gets the ball in the central areas. And after a couple of wee link-up passes, he finds himself at the edge of the box, which he made the thought a willing runner wanting the ball in behind the pack defence of Livingston. But what does Hadji do? The man with all that quality, is he going to rush it and just try and hit it or smash the pass in it. No, he's actually got the quality, and I mean quality, just to take a subtle wee touch inside with his left foot that just opens the door even further and then supplies the beautifully weighted ball in behind the defence inside the box to your man, Jermaine Defoe, who, I'm going to be honest, I thought he was scoring that because I thought he was going to go to the other side and just put it in the far corner, but he actually tries to do the goalkeeper and tries to hit it near side, but full credit to the goalkeeper, he reads that Jermaine Defoe is going to try that and he makes a big save, but... What I really love about Hadji here is when the ball does come back to him, if you watch it back, he has a wee look, he sees where Joe Aribo is and then instantly, first time with his left foot, delivers a perfectly weighted ball right on a sixpence for Joe Aribo to tap into the back of the net and get the most vital thing in this entire game. And that was the first goal. And now, I know Neil McCann sort of entertained the idea that it was maybe a scuff shot that went across to Joe Rebo, but I'm not having that at all. I want to give this laddie the respect he deserves because he's had a look and he's delivered. And as soon as he hits it, he's looking right at Joe Rebo to see if his cross is going to meet, meet it. So, I the first goal was all down to the sheer genius and quality of your man, Hadji. Now, speaking of geniuses, by the way, we do have to talk about the second goal of this game, but before we talk about that incident in the 16th minute, I just want to say a massive thank you from me to the Livingston Football Club because them taking the points off us early this season in the way that they did with parking the bus and 
us playing the possession style and just doing nothing and creating nothing, that is the single best thing to happen to us this entire freaking season because since that game, we have adjusted and changed our style to be much more direct and get the ball gone long. Instead of sort of passing about the centre circle from left to right and trying to get nice wee triangle passes, it's one, two, and it's a long through ball in behind these pack boxes, in behind these pathetic low blocks. We're just bypassing them now and we're making a good defensive side like Livingston look like they didn't have a clue where to be, where to go and where to mark. And aye, that's all down to them waking us up to say, right, we need a long ball here to get past that. And that's what happened with the second goal of this game. That's why it's so funny and that's why it's worth mentioning because we're a couple of attempts in the games, a couple of good passes from Connor Golton. It was well defended by Livingston. But this one, Ryan Jack wins the ball. That's what he did. Oh, damn day, man. He was like, I dug it apart chasing a fit boy. Just won the ball. And instead of going back to his two centre halves, he gives it to Tavernier. Tavernier takes a touch and hits the most scrumdily umptious Augustus Galoop for Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Would have been, oh, air this ball, people, because it's delicious. It's right into the most perfect place for a natural born goal scorer and you know the best thing you can say about that ball is the finish actually matched it and equaled it perfectly because Jermaine Defoe, what, what is, what's he going to do? Is he going to throw a massive hang it? Is he going to try and take a touch? Or is he just going to nonchalantly wait for the ball to the come down right onto his foot and then just kiss it into the back of the net? That right there is utter quality and that's that man's 300th club goal as well. Tremendous athlete, tremendous man and tremendous goal scorers because I know there's been a couple of people sort of going like, why is Jermaine Defoe playing in this game and we've got this guy and this guy? With the way that weeks went and everything we have gave on Saturday and Thursday, this was going to be a game now that we needed to take the one or two chances that we made because we knew we couldn't go for 90 minutes full tonto and go after them because of what we have gave. So the one or two chances that we did make had to go down to a natural goal scorer and by far, in my personal opinion, the best out-and-out -out finisher at this football club looking at all our strikers is Jermaine Defoe and that backed that right freaking up tremendous goal man and that was game set match 60 minutes versus a team that's took points off us this season and has been a pain in the arse to base old bayfold firm sorry over the last couple of seasons oh i'm getting all hot and bothered just thinking about it people because this is what the missing ingredient actually was in this rangers team and now we have it. Now, to be fair to Livingston, they did create their biggest chance of the entire game just five minutes after. And I've got to be honest, when he low drilled that cross in and it took a touch off Connor Golden and it touched the inside of the post, I nearly filled the boxers up. Gonna be honest, just for me today, honesty is key. But thankfully the ball didn't go into the back of net. McGregor's there, he picks the ball up, screams at his defenders. For the rest of the game, it was controlled and collected. For Rangers Football Club. In fact, we were in such control of the game of football, we started to do a wee bit of defending for Livingston Football Club. And if you watch the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was a couple of wee funny moments. I mean, there was one where it looked like we were destined to make it 3 0 as we had Jermaine Defoe and Aribo on one defender. But def Jermaine Defoe ends up doing a wee bit of defending Paolo Maldini would have been proud of because he just ushers Joe Rebo off the ball and gets it cleared for Livingston. But what's is absolutely hilarious, sorry, is that wasn't the only time it happened in the game as we're jumping to the second half because no much really happened in the game. Tavernier whips another beautiful ball into the mix on. It's gone to Connor Golton and as a Connor Golton guy, I'm getting ready to jump up, take the kit off and give it one of these. But probably for the sake of everyone, Calvin Bassey came out of nowhere, flattened Connor Golton and Golton's like, what are you doing? And Calvin Bassey's like smiling, just jogging back like, and I love that because I look at it from this perspective. If Calvin Bassey can't win the header, no one can win the header, whether it's opposition, teammates, no one. Nay Bassey, nay Hida. And Connor Golton learned that the hard way. But I all joking on that aside, ladies and gentlemen, the second half was what it was. But if you saw yesterday's preview video, I predicted a 2-0 win from Rangers and I expected it to be pretty ugly the longer the game 
actually went on. It happened to a T, but it was always, always going to go that way. So I'm not going to sit here and moan and say, oh, I'm disappointed with that, I'm disappointed with that. We're clear at the top of the table. We've added that missing ingredient to what was missing for the squad, and I'm absolutely delighted and just buzzing with that. It was truly was a beautiful Sunday in many, many aspects. But before we go ahead and wrap up the video, I want to talk about a couple of players. And the first player I want to talk about is Mr. Hollander. Because as a Conor Golton guy, I talk about everything Conor golton S. But Hollander, again, was absolutely brilliant. And it looks completely effortless to him because there's no emotion in that face, he's ice cold, you never see him flustered, you never see him agitated, you never see him annoyed, you never see him screaming, he just goes about his job like Robocop. Honestly, Commander Hollander's like this, gimme ball, gimme ball, header, gimme ball, gimme ball, slide tackle, that's it. And when he does make a slide tackle, or if he does make a header, you never see him going, yes, or pat himself in the back, it's like, aye, that's my job, I'm gonna go and do it again, watch me. Love that film, man. Just genuinely strolled it again for Lander. I'm so impressed by that partnership. And I think that's gone a long way to helping the likes of Bassey, who's been able to come in these games and just completely stroll it. Yes, he's all arms and all legs, but he's a young lad who's making his first couple of career starts and he's looked like he's played in that Rangers team for years. And I think you've got to give a lot of credit to not only him, but that back line as well. Hollander, Golton and Tav, because they're always at the right place at the right time for him. And it's just such a positive thing to see for Rangers. So I just wanted to give a wee bit of Hollander a wee bit of love because he was excellent again. There's someone else, though, I do want to give a wee bit of love. And it's the man, Mr. Ryan Jack, who a lot of people seem to have forgot seven, eight weeks ago this lad was voted as the player of the season by us because they were ready. Right, boom, we're done and dusty with Ryan Jack. He's not needed anymore. But I'm just so happy he's able to come in in Davis because yes Lovingston didn't create another big chance in the game but why did they not go ahead and make another chance in the game because every single time they tried to come forward and near that halfway line who met them who came and took the ball away who intercepted I think he had the most recoveries most interceptions and most tackles in the game it was it was incredible for Ryan Jack and I'm loving that he's able to come here and say hey so proud of him as well. Him and Davis rocked the show as always. But aye, there is one last person I want to speak about. Despite the fact that Tavernier was officially given Man of the Match and again, another 8 out of 10 for Tavernier. Brilliant performance for him. My official Man of the Match is going to be someone we spoke about right at the start of today's video. It has to be Hadji in my opinion but that's it ladies and gentlemen boys and girls in this truly beautiful Sunday we saw a solid performance from Rangers and three points in the bank you've heard my opinions on the players and the game now it's time for me to hand the reins over to you because I want to know what your thoughts and opinions are on this entire game and while you guys go ahead and do that all that's left for me to do is wrap up today's video but before we do that I just want to say a massive thank you from me to the greatly appreciate all the support. Thank you for spending a wee bit of time with me today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and bye.